All right, folks, welcome back to Shinnecasset Golf Course in Groton, Connecticut for the back nine at the inaugural Smith Collette Classic, an event put on by the Connecticut Hickory Golfers Association. Just a reminder, Donald Ross designed the current layout in 1919, and it was modified in 1997 by Mark Mungem after a land swap. I'll get into that as we go here. Namesakes for our event are Alex Smith, who is the head pro at Shenny in the mid-20s, and Glenna Colette Vare, who is considered the greatest woman golfer of all time. We had 25 Hickory golfers in our event, which was pretty good for a first time. And here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stewart and Jacoby. I'm using my primary Hickory set, but it's pared down, so I'm just using the Splice Neck Wood by Louisville Golf, four irons, and my trusty Tom Stewart RTJ putter. And I'm using a low compression Callaway Super Soft. Here's a scorecard for the back nine. We're playing the white tees in a total distance of about 60 hundred yards. So number 10's a par four, 360 yards. Got some bunkers on the left to avoid. Here are my playing partners again, Joe Mentz, who's the head pro at Mohegan Sun Golf Course. He starts things off with a real nice drive here. It's working. And Zane Smith, who's a heritage golfer out of Bethpage, New York. Relatively new to Hickory's starting to get the hang of it. He's having a bit of trouble off the tee in the last couple holes in the front nine. Uh, popping it up and I'm still sort of doing that here. But got some distance out of it. Was fortunate not to be in the bunker. Used the mashy here to get out of the rough and pretty good contact there. Also got a friendly bounce up toward the green. Bit of a tight spot here. Um, not a lot of room to work with on the green after the bunker. Tried using the flop shot that worked so well for me on number seven on the front nine, but uh, not the same result here. And then <laughs> blasted that one pretty good out of the bunker on the far side. So I'm ping ponging around here. I uh, didn't have the shot that came back across the green. So not the best start to the back nine. Eight. Too many of those today. And a nice putt by Zane to wrap up the hole. All right, number 11 is par four, 319 yards. Got a blind tee shot here somewhat. I was trying to use an easier swing there, and uh, I like the tempo of that, but Still pushed it right. So I'm using the Tom Stewart Auto Hackbarth 2 iron here to try to punch this under the tree. So put a little bit too much hook on that. But it was alright. Ended up in the fairway here. That was a poor effort. Not quite what I was trying to do. So I ended up scooting that way past the green. And this is a pretty tough green as you're going to see here in a moment. indents, kind of like thumbprint uh, impressions, multiple spots here. So I had a fair amount of uh, undulation to navigate. Didn't quite get the pace very well there either. I read the line on that pretty good, but again, not quite on track with the pace. That's pretty good though. Number 12, par 3, 120 yards. So it's got an elevated green protected by the bunkers. Joe had a great tee shot here, but it just wouldn't hold the green. God, I just can't spin it. <laughs> I just, you just can't spin it. I'm using the Croydon Spade Mashy off the tee here. He's happy with the contact, but uh, just got under it a little bit and it came up short. Here's Zane using his mashie. He's hitting this club pretty well. Uh, nice draw, but um, he's getting unlucky on a lot of these shots ending up in the bunkers. So in front of the green here, using the spade mashie again. And uh, just didn't give this enough. This shows you this kind of false front and how uh, much you have to get it above that because this ball came back down off of that, back into the rough. There's a little 
better. Got it past the false front at least. Just misread that. Joe had a nice chip up to this spot. And this was his par putt using the Tad Moore Chicopee replica putter, and he nails it. Number 13 is a par 4, 330 yards. See another green protected by bunkers. Trying to keep that tempo optimal, and uh, this was a great tee shot for me. Joe and I were in a similar location here. This is his approach, and it came up just short of the green there. I'm using the mashie and pulled it left. Disappointed with that effort, but yeah, it wasn't too bad here off the left side of the green. Avoided that bunker, I'm using the spade mashie here to get it out of the rough. Chip back up, not too bad. Reads on, on those mid range putts has been pretty good in this round. Just couldn't get a lot of them to drop. For number 14, par 4, 380 yards. Starting to head toward the water here, which you'll see in a moment. That's a great ball. You don't get any better than that, gentlemen. Nope, you're that was a fantastic tee shot by Joe. He had some great ones on the front nine, too. Kind of a textbook example of how to swing a hickory club, in my opinion. That was my best drive of the day. I hit a better shot with this club. That is perfect. Smooth. So set up nice here, using the mashie from about 145 yards out. I'm not really okay. expecting to get it on the green here, short, but, but um, I've got pretty good okay. contact on that. Yeah, a little short. That's exactly where you want to be. Okay. I was just kind of trying to get it in the front and roll it up, but uh, got some more roll out than I expected and ended up on the left side of the green. Give me a good opportunity for a par here. Oh. All around good putt. That I converted, <laughs> just barely. So number 15 is a par three, 170 yards. This is the first of the three holes on the new parcel of land acquired from Pfizer in 1997 that Mark Mungem uh, designed these holes on. Joe with a All great right. tee shot here. Mungin was trying to match, you know, the, the, the feel of Shenacoset while also taking advantage of some really beautiful uh, waterfront views that you're going to see here in a moment. And I think these three holes blend in really well with the rest of the layout and are quite memorable. Just using the mashie here to try to get close. Yeah, I felt like I had too much uh, rough to putt it through. This is my par putt coming back. Didn't hit it. Hit that last putt, I didn't realize Joe's it was par putt. Kind of a yeah. Tough spot for yep. There we go. Number 16, par 4, 375 yards. This was an intimidating tee shot for me. Um, feels like you're not going to have enough distance to get out there, but I was just trying to stay focused with the tempo. Tempo was good, but I still ended up pushing it right. This is a real pretty shot, in my opinion. Got the long grass here. You see the Thames River there in the, uh, the background. Sun was starting to get a little lower in the sky. That was a pretty good out with the Tom Stewart 2 iron. I'm using the mashie here to try to run this up, but I got under it a bit too much and pushed it right. And there you see the Thames River as it flows into Long Island Sound. Just a beautiful green here. I spend all day putting and chipping on this green. Just missed that one. That would have been a nice up and down. Great. Uh. We'll linger a little bit longer on this beautiful view. Number 17 is a par 4, 330 yards. We're heading back toward the clubhouse now, away from the water. 
Zane's using his mashi here off the tee, and I thought this was good to show uh, everyone. When you're having a hard time yep. using a wood That's off the tee, That's what as Zane was earlier one. in the round, yeah. just use a club that you're comfortable with, and that was the mashi for Zane, and he got nice contact on that, got himself in the fairway. Even though he gave up some distance, he's in play. There's a wow. decent drive for me. Good, I think. Yeah. I'm using the mashi here to run up. And I was pretty happy with this, even though it went past the pin. Bounced it into the hill, kind of a Sarah Bay Country Club strategy here. Put me off the back of the green, but not a bad putt back down toward the hole. Gave me a good shot at par here. And I converted it. All right, number 18, par five, 480 yards. Got some strategic bunkers to navigate here off the tee. And Joe plays this beautifully. Just fades this real nice over that left side bunker back into the fairway. I'm gonna try to do the same thing. I <laughs> ended up skying it up. Got some distance out of it though, got over the bunker, which is all I was trying to do there. All right, great. So I'm on the left side in the rough. Just off the fairway, trying to advance this. Uh, I did get great contact on that, so I wasn't real happy with where this was going. I was also, you know, going right. But, in the fairway. I've got to look at the green here, using the mashy. And I was pretty happy with this shot. Dropped it in the middle of the green, but it ended up rolling back uh, off the green. Uh, Joe had a similar look, though, closer. It's another one of these shots that he probably sticks all the time with his wedges, modern wedges, but uh, with the hickory clubs that kept rolling out. And he ended up in a similar spot as me. So I'm chipping back up to the green here. Just didn't uh, judge that very well. Zane's got a putt here that's similar to mine in a second. So I'm trying to watch and see what his is doing. That was a good putt for Zane. I didn't read it as well as I should have, though. So as I wrap up this short putt here, just want to thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this round at the Shinnecasset Golf Course. I'll be back next week with another course vlog. In the meantime, check out my other Donald Ross course vlogs in the upper right. And in the lower right, if you are interested in getting into Hickory Golf Repair, I've got an entire playlist for that. And uh, you'll find that in the lower right. Thanks again for watching. As always, please like and subscribe.